This video will cover bivariate data, scatter plots, and null values. Measures of central tendency, variability, and spread summarize a single variable by providing important information about its distribution. Often more than one variable is collected on each individual. For example, in large health studies of populations, it's common to obtain variables such as age, sex, height, weight, blood pressure, and total cholesterol on each individual. Economic studies may be interested in, among other things, personal income and years of education. As a third example, most university admissions committees ask for an applicant's high school grade point average and standardized admission test scores, like the SAT. Bivariate data consists of two quantitative variables for each individual. In contrast with univariate or single variable data, our first interest is in summarizing such data in a way that's analogous to summarizing univariate data. By way of illustration, let's consider something with which we're all familiar, age. Let's begin by asking if people tend to marry other people of about the same age. Our experience tells us yes, but how good is the correspondence? One way to address the question is to look at pairs of ages for a sample of married couples. Table 1 shows the ages of 10 married couples. Going across the columns, we see that yes, husbands and wives tend to be of about the same age, with men having a tendency to be slightly older than their wives. This is no big surprise, but at least the data bear out our experiences, which is not always the case. The pairs of ages in Table 1 are from a data set consisting of 282 pairs of spousal ages, too many to make sense of from a table. What we need is a way to summarize the 282 pairs of ages. We know that each variable can be summarized by a histogram, which is a graphical representation of a distribution. A histogram partitions the variable on the x-axis into various contiguous class intervals of usually equal widths. The heights of the bars represent the class frequencies. Here we can see that each distribution is fairly skewed with a long right tail. We can also summarize the variables with a mean and standard deviation. From Table 1 we can see that not all husbands are older than their wives, and it's important to see that this fact is lost when we separate the variables. That is, even though we provide summary statistics on each variable, the pairing within the couple is lost by separating the variables. We cannot say, for example, based on means alone, what percentage of couples has younger husbands than wives. We have to count across the pairs to find this out. Only by maintaining the pairing can meaningful answers be found about the couples. Another example of information not available from the separate descriptions of husbands and wives' ages is the mean age of husbands with wives of a certain age. For instance, what is the average age of husbands with 45-year-old wives? Finally, we don't know the relationship between the husband's age and the wife's age. We can learn much more by displaying the bivariate data in a graphical form that maintains the pairing. Figure 2 shows a scatter plot of the paired ages. The x-axis represents the age of the husband and the y-axis the age of the wife. There are two important characteristics of the data revealed by Figure 2. First, it's clear that there's a strong relationship between the husband's age and the wife's age. The older the husband, the older the wife. When one variable, y, increases with the second variable, x, we say that x and y have a positive association. Conversely, when y decreases as x increases, we say that they have a negative association. Second, the points cluster along a straight line. When this occurs, the relationship is called a linear relationship. Figure 3 shows a scatter plot of arm strength and grip strength from 149 individuals working in physically demanding jobs, including electricians, construction, maintenance workers, and auto mechanics. Not surprisingly, the stronger someone's grip, the stronger their arm tends to be. There is, therefore, a positive association between these variables. Although the points cluster along a line, they're not clustered quite as closely as they are for the scatter plot of spousal age. A common problem when working with real-world data is the presence of missing or null values within a data set. There are three strategies to deal with the issue. The first one is to omit the rows. If the variable is very important to the analysis and there are not many observations with missing values, it can be acceptable to filter or delete those rows. The second is to treat missing as a separate category. If the variable is categorical, this is easy. If the variable is numeric, then the variable will need to be binned and a category created for the missing rows. The third is to impute a value using distribution measures, such as the mean or the median, or other variables. If values of other fields have differing distributions for the variable with missing values, we can calculate separate distribution measures using these categories. This concludes our video on bivariate data, scatter plots, and null values. <laughs>